So this is gonna be a video to show how we handled a situation recently where we checked our bluebird box and found that it had been invaded by a brown-headed cowbird egg. Um, we weren't real sure we'd never had this happen before. Should we leave the egg in the nest? Should we remove the egg? And after doing some research, we decided to let nature take its course and leave the brown-headed cowbird egg in the nest. It actually turned out where we live, it's illegal to remove the brown-headed cowbird egg because it's a native species. So once we found that out, we just decided to leave everything as it was. Again, let nature take its course and just kind of document and monitor how everything played out. We started with one brown head cowbird egg and four bluebird eggs. Of the four bluebird eggs, three of them did hatch. The fourth one never did, and it disappeared from the nest. So we assume that the mother bluebird removed the egg some kind of way eventually. Um, we were never real sh sure what happened to the fourth egg. You can see it in this part of the video. The three bluebird babies hatched. The brown-headed cowbird baby had obviously hatched. Over time, the brown-headed cowbird was definitely the larger bird. It grew faster than the other birds. So you could tell when you would check the nest, the brown-headed cowbird was the obvious bird. Um, it was you know, taking up more food, I'm sure, growing faster, but we did find that the bluebird mother and father continued to feed not only the brown-headed cowbird but the other babies really with no issues that we could notice the brown-headed cowbird was always the first to the bot you know to the opening of the box to receive the food but the mother bluebird would go in the box often to make sure that the other babies were being fed as well so even though the brown-headed cowbird did grow faster than the others it never seemed like the other babies were not being fed or at any risk of not surviving during this whole process. So maybe we just got lucky, but that's what we had found. And eventually the brown-headed cowbird did fledge the nest successfully. Once the brown-headed cowbird had fledged the nest, we continued to check the bluebird babies. They were perfectly fine. It was interesting to see that the brown-headed cowbird baby stayed in the area, I guess while it was developing its flying skills, or maybe it just because it knew it would be continued to be fed by the bluebird mom and dad. But it was interesting to watch how it hung around the bluebird box. In fact, a lot of times it would just sit on top of the box and just lay there, almost like it wanted to be close with the bluebird babies. I'm not sure if this is a normal process that happens or if it was just you know something strange that was going on, but the, the brown-headed cowbird did stay for a few days in the area and then eventually, once it developed its flying skills, did fly off on its own. As the days went on, we would continue to check the bluebird house. Again, by now, the brown-headed cowbird baby was long gone on its own. The bluebird babies continued to grow as they normally would, um, you know, just got larger, developed their wings, and eventually started fledging the nest. Uh, we weren't able to see all three fledge the nest, but we were able to see two of them. We had checked this nest on the 28th and knew that there was uh, one bird still left in the nest and there had been two earlier that day, but we saw the second one leave the nest and were able to track it down. You can maybe see in this portion of the video, um, when these birds fledge the nest, they don't have very good flying skills yet. So this bird flew out of the nest and made it to the top of one of our bushes and kind of hung out there for a little bit. And, uh, and then again, stayed in the area for a while the mother bluebird continued to feed it, and then eventually, once it developed its flying skills, it took off on its own, just like the brown-headed cowbird did and the other bluebird babies. And then eventually, we were pretty much just left with the one last bluebird in the house, continued to watch it, and shortly thereafter, that bird also successfully fledged. He made it to our windowsill when he left the nest. Um, but just to recap, you know, if you're ever in this situation, I'm not recording this video to tell you what to do, but I will say that in our instance, we left everything alone and every bluebird egg that hatched was able to successfully fledge as well as the brown-headed cowbird baby. So there was no drama, nothing went wrong. And again, I'm not saying that's gonna happen in every situation, but that was our experience.
just thought we would share.